this is an opportunity to literally uh, partner with the retiring agent, have leads given to you, pay for them with referral fees on the back end, but begin to develop lifelong clients. And we find that the conversion rate on a lot of these leads is um, upwards of 80%. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui with a quick commercial break with one of our newest sponsors. I'm super excited to be partnering with these guys. Does 15 to 20% ROI investing in turnkey rentals sound attractive? Did you know you can use the Burr strategy with new construction that has immediate equity already? You guys have heard me talk about stuff like this. Renter Retirement offers fully turnkey properties that are newly built or renovated, leased and managed, allowing you to invest with confidence out of state. They have single family, multifamily, new build and syndication opportunities across multiple markets that maximize cash flow, appreciation and equity. Renter Retirement assists investors in learning how to build a comprehensive business plan with the best investment and tax strategies to achieve financial freedom through real estate investing. There's no excuse not to get started in real estate investing when you have the right team and system in place. To learn more, visit renttoretirement.com. That's renttoretirement.com or call 1-800-311-6781. That's 800-311-6781 to learn about how you can get started investing in some of the best cash flow markets today. You know, and if you guys want to learn more about Zach, episode 1025, we dig in for a good 45 minute interview where he tells you the secrets to investing in real estate out of state. And him and I shared a lot of ideas about what works and what doesn't. You'll get to hear a lot about his company and his business. You know, if you're an agent from out of state and you've got referrals looking for stuff, they work with other agents on a referral basis. And we've talked so much since COVID hit that everybody needs to have a backup plan, right? Every one of you agents needs to have a backup plan. You should all be investing in real estate. And if you're having trouble finding the time and the team to do it, maybe something like rent to retirement is the solution for you. So thank you for listening. Go check them out. Now back to the rest of our podcast. What's up, real estate rock stars? Today I am interviewing Justin and Jessica Ball from Peoria, Illinois. They have so much to offer. I'm so excited to hear all about their unique niche in this market and to see what they can do to help all of us rookies and all of the rock stars level up and maybe pivot. So, hey guys, how's it going today? It's going good. It's busy, busy in our real estate market for residential and commercial real estate. So we are uh, working hard and helping lots of people. Is the commercial market similar to residential right now where everything's getting a billion offers? Is it just as competitive or I know it's a completely different beast, but how does it compare? I wouldn't say it's as competitive as the residential market, but our warehouse space and our multifamily um, investments and our recreational hunting land is just getting bids the day that it comes out and selling uh, really, really fast like residential. Do So you guys are on a team. How many people are on your team? Yeah, so I'll explain the team structure. So. Uh, um, I'm the team lead. And so there's myself. And then we have two other agents uh, that help with residential and then Justin as well. So we're a team of uh, four, eight, no, yes, four agents. And then we have a full-time assistant as well. So really a team of five. That's awesome. Is your assistant a VA or is it a local assistant, like an admin position in your office? Yep. So she is local um, and she does it all. Uh, admin, office manager for us, transaction coordinator, um, make sure that I eat lunch. I mean, she, she is on top of it to make sure that we are running um, everything we can for our clients. That's amazing. So were you guys in real estate separately before 
you got married or how did all of this transpire? Yeah. Do you want me to tackle that one, Justin? <laughs> all right. So um, I have been an agent. It'll be five years um, at the end of this week. Uh, so five years. And prior to that, I was 10 years in law enforcement uh, and I was a federal probation officer. Uh, once I had my daughter, I realized it was just not as um, conducive to family life as uh, I had hoped it would be. And so we made the jump uh, and uh, with the full support of Justin, he said, go for it. And so I jumped into real estate and he has been my um, unlicensed, unpaid uh, assistant, essentially, uh, for the last several years, uh, kind of jumping in, helping behind the scenes, um, doing a lot of our marketing. I've always said he's my secret weapon when it comes to marketing, because um, he's a genius with that kind of stuff. And then he recently um, got his license to help us with our commercial division. And Stephanie, I got to tell you, I was an extremely important, high producing, unpaid, <laughs> unlicensed assistant. <laughs> I bet my husband is my unlicensed, unpaid assistant, too. And I think what you were explaining that your admin does is what my husband does, too. He'll like throw the keys to me and might get my purse and like knows where my stuff is when I'm like printing MLS sheets and getting my folders ready for showings. Like he's making sure I like stay sane and that I eat and function and take care of myself too. So you guys are on a team together and Jessica, do you also focus on the succession planning or is that more of Justin's field? Yeah, so we both do that. Um, it started out as um, and it, kind of where it came from is, and, and I'm sure many of you agents out there have actually experienced this, uh, where you all of a sudden get that email that says, hey, so-and-so is retiring um, from the brokerage. Uh, there'll be cake and punch in the break room. Um, come say goodbye. And if you want to buy like a writer, you can you know, bring 20 bucks and we're, we're selling some of the signs on the writers. And I got that several times and I'm thinking, we always have people in the pipeline. So like, what, what about the people that this agent had in the pipeline for selling this spring or summer, or, you know, the people that said, well, I'm ready next year, or the ones that have 10, 20, 30 investment properties, and they're eventually going to want to load those. And, and so I was just like, where are these agents clients going? Who, who are they going to? Is there a plan? And so um, started asking those questions um, and talking with agents. And we found out that there, sometimes people had a plan. Um, and they were kind of unofficially working with another agent and, and handing off those clients. And then other times there, there wasn't really a plan at all. And the door was just kind of being shut. Uh, and the clients were kind of left out there. The agents were leaving money on the table. Uh, and so we really, that was kind of the, the brainchild for, for the succession planning. We, we started doing a succession plan with a, um, a residential agent. And as we were researching, we found there was, there was nothing really written out there to help us. There was no templates on how to do it. How do you structure a contract? What, what do you do? What do you pay them? What do you not pay them? What do you, how do you do it? And uh, so we just started taking notes, interviewing people who were doing it um, and kind of putting it together and realized that we can put that out there for other people to utilize as well. So they don't have to do all the um, creation like we did uh, at the beginning to, to figure it all out. And, That's uh, so brilliant. And so you found a need and just made it your niche, niche, whatever the word is. <laughs> That's cool. And so when I was first reading about your um, your book and learning about your specialty of succession, I was thinking like, oh, I wonder if they like sold their business and were, you know, wrote down all the steps, but you are fairly new in your business and just saw a need and then made it happen. How did the book like come about? How do you get published? How did you just like sit down and bang it all out in one day and it was easy peasy or what happened? I'll well, let Justin me, jump in on that one. <laughs> yeah, kind of like you, my background is in education and I worked in higher education administration for a while. Um, wrote a dissertation. I won't talk about, about that here, but really <laughs> knew the foundations for writing a book. And as we were going through 
and interviewing agents who had been through succession plans, both as retiring and, if you will, uh, monetizing their business, as well as their successors. Uh, We found that there was a lot of stories out there about what worked really, really well for agents and what were major failure points in the succession planning process. And so kind of my good academic nature, I was taking pages and pages of notes. And we uh, voluntarily, a lot of people said, I'm, I'm so happy to share the contract that we use for our succession plan. And so we really started to capture so much information and literally talk to agents across the country, California, Texas, Florida, uh, all throughout our home state of Illinois and Iowa, and really had all the makings for a book. And so we told uh, our broker owner, hey, we're going to write a book about this. And I think at the time he probably had his doubts, but he was incredibly supportive. And during the pandemic, as we got through the first several years of a success, our first succession plan uh, and taking over this, this agent Jim's business and starting our second succession plan, we had all of the material together and we found a great recommended publisher and author and they took what felt like an academic textbook uh, that I had compiled and made it into a really easy to read um, ebook and an audio book format so that we could really share this out there uh, with other agents. And, and I was I was really excited when you were hosting this because you you spent so much time in your interview talking about getting going for new agents and, and building your business. And this is such a way for um, agents to almost inherit a sphere of influence that's developed. And so oftentimes, Um, You know, people are paying a heavy amount for leads and lead generation. And this is an opportunity to literally um, partner with the retiring agent, have leads given to you, pay for them with referral fees on the back end, but begin to develop lifelong clients. And we find that the conversion rate on a lot of these leads is um, upwards of 80%. And so these are really people who are being given to us that have been primed uh, through a great relationship with the retiring agent to be ready to work with us and who trust us greatly because of that handoff and transition um, between the retiring agent and us as successors. That is really amazing. So succession planning for real estate agents is available on Amazon. Like where else can people access your book and learn how to monetize their business in retirement. Or maybe they're not like retiring because they're 80 and tired of real estate, but maybe like at some point, I feel like I'm going to be exhausted from working so hard in this insane market. And I would have, you know, my whole CRM, my whole sphere, just want to sell that to someone and make money, but pivot my business and transition into like short-term rental management or something different. So where could I find your book or listen to the audio and learn about it? Or is the book more about what you guys do? And if I wanted to create a succession business? So when we wrote the book, we really wrote it for both audiences. So if you are an agent who is thinking about retiring in the next five years, three years, or next week, uh, (laughs) it's an excellent resource for you to begin to think about how to identify a successor and how to really um, transfer the trust of your sphere of influence to them, and then monetize your business through continuing to receive referral fees um, being paid out. And we provide a number of different contract examples uh, for those retiring agents. You can go to resuccession.com, or you can check out our book or audio book on amazon.com. We also offer consulting services to help uh, those retiring agents and their successors uh, and do presentations. And so there's a lot of options out there. The second audience for the book is uh, agents who could and have the capacity to take on more business. And so it's about how, uh, you know, every other chapter is written from their perspective to say, 
If there is an agent who you really respect in your brokerage or in your MLS, how do you go to them and share with them that you would really like to learn from their systems, learn about the business that they've built, and potentially see yourself as a viable successor and partner in the future um, as they go through the retirement process? That's so genius. It's like you guys could or maybe you have this, but my wheels are spinning. And I'm just thinking we need like a match.com for people that want to sell their business and their sphere and people that want to be the successor. And um, I mean, in your own MLS, of course, that makes the most amount of sense. But um, also, I was kind of thinking if you are an agent moving, like, I feel like everybody's moving out of California. So if you're an agent in California and you're moving to Tennessee or somewhere new, it seems like it would be a good idea to network and find someone maybe like, you know, prove yourself to that agent that you can take over their business. But I never thought about like, that would be a super great way to transition if you're an agent that has to move, sell your current business to someone where you're leaving and then try to take over someone else's business when you start in a new area. Absolutely. And you brought up the whole, you know, like a match, uh, a, a matching for agents in that respect. And one thing that uh, another audience for this book that I think is is critical is the broker owners. Um, uh, and, and because it, they want to keep this business in house. And as an agent leaves, whether they're leaving the industry or they're retiring, you know, those clients that was in you know, that company, they're just kind of out there for the picking of, you know, whoever's paying for that zip code now or, or whatever. Um, And uh, so it's really uh, advantageous for the broker owners to be paying attention to who's leaving and who might be good matches to, you know, pair them with for a succession plan, because then ultimately that agent who's building their business um, is going to win. The agent who's leaving is going to win because they're still getting, you know, paid out if it's structured correctly and, and the succession uh, is done correctly. And then that broker owner wins because that business is staying in house, um, which is important. And and yeah, so literally that's one of the things that we we tell people and, and what we did uh, was we went to our broker owner uh, and that's what we suggest other people doing. If you don't know where to go or who to even talk to, whether you're the retiring agent or the agent looking to grow, start with them. They have a vested interest in helping you find that person. And they may even know of people that have hinted, hey, I might be retiring. I'm not sure when my date is. I've got to figure out what to do with my business and my clients. And yeah, they should know like the ins and outs of, you know, they have the whole vision of the brokerage from the agent's perspective. That is so brilliant. Gosh, this is so exciting. You guys I mean, this is just such a very specific niche, niche. I don't know. I am (laughs) so paranoid about how I say that word, but like that's so specific. Justin, I saw you were going to add to that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the challenges with people doing this and why I don't think it's talked about that much is writing the contracts for these get really complex and people don't know where to start. So we include about six different sets of contracts in our book that are kind of templates or foundations for people to begin to work from based on the license law that's in their state. And so historically, what we found is that as an agent retires and their successor takes over their business, that they can expect to close about one third of their annual average from the last three years. And if they're paying a referral fee of 25, 30, 35%, that's still pretty significant for that retiree to be earning in those years of retirement. And we structure those contracts generally um, to where they are paid out for those referrals for three years, because what we find is um, that there's sort of attrition over that time and people start to recognize that that retiring agent has, has stopped selling real estate and or moved on. And so 
when we do this, it's the intent that that sphere of influence really then becomes their successor's sphere of influence. And we structure not necessarily a lump sum payment, um, but that those continued referral fees for three years, plus some kind of incentive if a number or uh, a sales volume goal is met after the first or second year, because it really keeps that retiree motivated to clean up their database and pass a really clean database on to their successor and to continue to answer the, their cell phone when somebody may call them and say, uh, you know, hey, Justin, I, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I would love to sell my home. And I would say, ah, my team member Stephanie is going to handle this. Hold on, I'll transfer you over. I'll have you give you a call. And um, the, the data is kind of shocking. And I really wanted to, to share this kind of with the, the academic background. Um, the National Association of Realtors does a big membership profile every year, and they assess the average age of real estate agents. And that has been going up uh, the past couple of years from 55 to 56. And they ask agents on there their age, and they ask them if they're going to be selling real estate in the next two years. And shockingly, there is over 600,000, sorry, 300,000 um, agents in the, or realtors in the United States who are over the age of 60. And about 20% of them don't expect to be selling real estate in the next 24 months. So in our home state of Illinois, that means there's about 7,000 to 7,500 realtors um, who are, are preparing to, to phase out in that sense. And so there's a lot of opportunity. And I think more so than um, a lot of brokerages realize and recognize and that a lot of other agents and realtors recognize uh, that there is going to be some serious retirements of some people who have really invested their lives and their careers in creating this book of business, the sphere of influence, and they've got a wonderful chance to monetize it in their retirement and really provide continuity to the people that they know and love and who are their family and who they may have helped multiple generations buy homes. And those retiring agents saying to their sphere of influence, whether it's through postcards or messages or videos in their social media, Hey, I'm, I'm partnering with Jessica. And as you have real estate needs in the future, contact our team and get used to working with both of us. It really sets the stage for um, their repeat clients and uh, their referrals to really be ready to work with their successor and have that faith and confidence and trust in them. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Buchastegui, and I'm interrupting myself to bring you this commercial break from one of our sponsors. And I know, I know you guys would much rather listen to the content and not the ads and not the sponsors, but this is one that I'm actually super, super excited with. You know, so many of the realtors that we interview on the show, they talk about how much systems are important and how much follow-up is important. And I'm really, really excited about our new sponsor. There's somebody I've been looking at for a long time. And when they reached out to me, I said, yes, we have to be able to do this deal. So that sponsor is Follow Up Bob. You know, on an interview last week with agent Mark McGuire, I asked him what his favorite software and what his favorite system was. And he said it was Follow Up Boss. And then he went on for another three or four minutes to talk about why Follow Up Boss was the best CRM he uses. So there's a lot of superstars out, out there that use Follow Up Boss. Some of the stats they gave me, Robert Slack, 1.5 billion team in Florida, number one in the US. He uses Follow Up Boss to get a 400% ROI on his massive paid lead spend. Deborah Beagle, co-owner of the Ashton Group in Nashville, uses Follow Up Boss to guarantee the agents who join her team get two homes under contract in the first 90 days. That's a big guarantee for new agents. Barry Jenkins of the, your friends in real estate uses Follow Up Boss to automate everything so his team can produce 200 million on 25 hour work weeks. All right, so here's an offer. You guys are gonna get this special for being Real Estate Rockstars listeners. Now I've, I've used Follow Up Boss. We've actually used it in our non real estate businesses as well because it's so good at being able to set timers, set automatic texting and emailing, and what do, what do you know, best name ever, follow up. So here's what we got. For Real Estate Rockstars listeners, you get a 30 day free trial. That's normally 14 days. So in order to get this, you go followupboss.com forward slash rockstars. 
So again, followupboss.com, just like it sounds, forward slash rockstars. Go there, get your 30-day free trial and check it out, especially if you aren't using any systems or any CRMs yet. This will be a great one for you to start with. All right, everybody, thanks again. Now back to our show. That is so brilliant. This is, you guys are just, I mean, I always try to like preach that real estate agents are or should be entrepreneurs. Like we're self-employed, we're 1099, you are your business. And if you can find a need, and solve a problem, which is what entrepreneurs are just naturally great at doing, then you could build a business. And there's, in real estate, there's so many different avenues. And it never, ever occurred to me about like what I would do. I just assume I'll quit doing real estate one day. And I didn't think about what would happen to my clients. But Um, I guess I just assume like my team would take them on. Do you guys, um, have you taken over any of the businesses? Have you experienced succession yourself yet? Or do you hope to do that with your, like all the connections and networking opportunities you'll have? Yeah, so we have done, um, we're on our third succession right now of taking over um, a retiring agent's uh, business. Um, and, and we've, one, we had um, a full year of being able to co brand and co market and really get in front of his sphere. Um, the second one was incredibly short, it was very unplanned, and we had like two weeks. Um, and so in the book, actually, we give some examples of like, if you don't have time, like here's at least a couple of things to do to, to help monetize that as much as possible for, for all parties involved. Um, and then the third one is, is the commercial one. We have not um, done any succession where, where we're the ones leaving. Um, I mean, we're, we're still building and growing. Um, although uh, it, going through the successions with retiring agents, um, it's definitely given us perspective on the systems and the CRMs and and everything that we're doing now to it, it build it the right way so that it's scalable, but also in a sense sellable. So that when we you know eventually want to retire or leave the industry, that we can do a successful succession plan with another agent or team in taking over our business. Um, and and because we we've, we've learned that that keeping those databases and that information and then and that regular just in front of your clients is so important. I think a couple of things to add in there. We've we've done some national speaking and conferences at the, the Remax R4 convention, and we talked to some really wonderful agents who just said, "I've been trying to retire and I've been trying to find my successor." And no one can do exactly what I do. And so we also talk about identifying the four or five things that make you a really unique and distinctive real estate agent. And how do you focus on those and choose a successor who can give your clients the same service and the same um, specific skill set that you really have become known for as the the agent retiring. And so we really talk about, are are you someone who loves to go sit around the kitchen table and have an intimate conversation? Um, Like Jessica, uh, as Jim was uh, going through his retirement, um, or are you like me on the commercial side where I love a great spreadsheet that I can really help prep clients for understanding return on investment and tax changes And that as uh, we go through our succession plan there, um, we understand a lot about zoning laws and regulation development, um, working with municipalities and groups and and can service uh, clients in that way. And so a lot of that kind of matchmaking process like you were talking about is how would my clients like to be served and how can I find someone who can, again, provide that kind of continuity or level of service uh, with the experiences that that a person's clients um, really have come to expect from them, because you never want that mismatch. Like, oh, Stephanie is going to take over our business, and Stephanie really wants to go sit down with people, and they really want uh, expedited service and to be texted and um, to to really move quickly and and promptly through the process with information. 
It sounds like there's nothing you guys have not thought of. Like this is the most thorough business plan and most thorough thought out process I've ever heard. But I'm assuming this isn't your entire business model, right? Like you are just traditional agents helping people buy and sell residential real estate just like normal or standard typical agents, I guess. But then you have such an amazing specialization that can help you grow and expand and network and pivot in so many different ways. But on the day-to-day grind, you help people go try to get their offer accepted in this insane market. And you do all the hard work of having a listing and helping sellers navigate the million offers they're going to get. So when you started five years ago, Jessica, and how many did you do your first year in real estate? Um, I started in in kind of the middle year or in in the middle of the year. Um, So it wasn't a complete year. I want to say I did, it was 20 something, um, maybe transactions uh, that that first in 2017. And then the next um, couple of years, it was like 40 and transactions then 40. And then um, I think last year it was like 68. And then most recent year, 2021, it was 116. That is high level from... Day one, how did you get that many transactions right out the gate? Well, I should probably clarify that our average sales price in our market is 160000 And so you do have to sell quite a bit to make <laughs> a decent living here um, because we're, we're, we're a more rural market. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, buckling down and and doing the grind and uh, hiring an assistant when you want to scale so that your productive hours are spent doing productive things. Um, And we see the succession planning essentially, you know, why we started doing it. It's a lead gen, essentially. I mean, I know um, on this podcast, and particularly you guys talk a lot about lead gen, how do you get the business? This was a way for us to get business. And it's so amazing when you you're partnering with a seasoned agent who's kind of mentoring you along on on passing on their uh, clients to you and what better credibility than an agent who's been in the business and is seen as the expert in their field basically saying you know hey mr and mrs seller um i'm i'm not able to 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 come meet with you but uh i'm gonna have jessica show up at at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon to meet with you and she'll get your house listed you've just been given the stamp of approval there is no fighting for the conversion on that. Like you've just been handed it on a silver platter and they're trusting you and they, they're not calling anyone else. Um, and, and so that's, what's amazing. You're literally getting the stamp of approval, the credibility from an agent that's been trusted by their sphere for, for many years. Um, and then you also have, uh, and I know, uh, Stephanie, you talked about this um, when you were the guest on the podcast, uh, how awesome it was to speak to other agents and get their information and their knowledge and just their input on on how they've been uh, doing their business and what they've learned. And when you have a agent who you're taking over their business, you essentially have a seasoned agent who has a vested interest in your success. And so they're, they're right there kind of at your beck and call when you have questions and issues and, Hey, how would you handle the situation? And uh, it's, it's just such a win-win all around. I think something to add to that, because you were talking about the daily grind of selling homes and commercial real estate is as we go through succession plans, we don't want to lose uh, the brand of the Jessica Ball team at Remax Traders Unlimited, or the O'Brien and Ball commercial real estate uh, uh, division that we have. And so we really talk about co-marketing and co-branding and the work that we do co-marketing with the retiring agent to their sphere of influence, but maybe not to the general public, because we still want to keep our own brand identity in that sense. And it's not that we need to go out with this team name to everybody on the planet or everybody in our region or everybody in our county. It's really just about building that team and that rapport and that trust with their sphere of influence. And I think what's amazing is, you know, we're, we're still growing the business and the Jessica Ball team 
and um, not always working by referral 100% of the time. We do lead gen activities, but with the agents who we are doing succession planning with and the, the really seasoned agents that we've worked with on their succession plans, they're generating 70, 80, 90% of their business through referrals exclusively. It's not that they're out there buying ads or buying leads or um, you know maybe they still advertise and sponsor things and brand, um, but their leads are really coming to them. And so um, in a sense, it's different than the advertising and the work that we do for lead generation for our own team um, and the, the brand of the Jessica Paul team at Remax Traders Unlimited. So you're juggling a lot and a few different business models all within your team structure. And you're focusing really on the micro and the macro perspectives. You're ready for how your business is going to rock today and tomorrow and next month. But you also have the long game in mind every day thinking of how we will be ready to just sell off this clean, structured business when the time comes. That's amazing. Because if I had to sell off my business today, or if like, God forbid, I end up in the hospital or incapacitated, everybody is screwed. Like my TC is phenomenal and she will definitely keep some things together. but. I don't have any, I don't know. I just sold so many houses from day one that, and I was teaching full time at the same time. And then it was 2020 and you know, all that has happened. So that's my excuse for not getting my strong, like structures and systems in place but you're really giving me a lot of perspective and another good reminder of like, this is a business, this, like you are your business and it's a reflection of you and it needs to be clean and clear because I mean, there really are people's like largest financial transactions that are depending on you. And if you are sick for a day, or in the hospital for three days, then, or for three months, you know, it could really throw someone off. So your systems and your team structure is just brilliant. That's that's probably one of the biggest challenges in working with retiring agents is so much of their business over the years, maybe during the prime of their business, they were excellent at processes and record keeping. And as they work more by referrals, a lot of their database and, and their theoretical CRM is their phone and is their brain and is their connections. And so one of the things that we've really had to dedicate time to doing and the, there's a chapter in the book about is, is CRMs and databases and getting the history of your transactions and the people who make a lot of referrals um, to you and for you and your recent clients, your future clients, your warm leads and prospects and really getting those organized because it's a really different scenario. And if you want to be paid on those referrals, we've got to be able to track where those referrals come from um, to be able to to give people credit um, and and to pay out those referral fees. And so there have been some retiring agents who have had really clean together databases. And there have even been some that we truly have recreated their database from their past five or 10 years of sales through brokerage records uh, that are there Uh, with their permission. And and again, following all the laws and legalities of of licenses in Illinois and other places. But um, there's a, there's a great deal of organization uh, that comes along with the success of uh, those activities. That you guys must have like super strong executive functioning skills. When I was in the um, like teaching space and doing reading intervention and working with students with um, varying ability levels and different learning disabilities, I was obsessed with learning about executive functioning skills. And I I've been thinking about how to incorporate that into like my 
mental health and how to stay sane in real estate classes, because I think it's so important to identify like what skills you have and what skills you don't and to leverage other people. But it sounds like you guys just have it all down and like your organizational skills, your time management, your just, I mean, the personality skills, the relationship building, you guys seem like absolutely perfect. Tell me what a challenge is. What was like a roadblock you had in the beginning or maybe something you're overcoming now? Like, tell me it's not all a hundred percent perfect, but it surely seems <laughs> that way. So I'll dive into that. So, so first of all, we, we just make a really good team because we have opposite skill sets. Um, we don't let Justin near any of our residential clients because he has no empathy. Um, and, and he knows this. Uh, and he's smiling and laughing right now. Um, and, and where, you know, I, 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 can, I can read and understand and explain Excel sheets, but I cannot do what he does on Excel sheets. And the math that he does in his head, I don't do. I am not the organized one. Um, our accountant, I've told him, I said, if anything ever should happen to Justin, just know you're getting everything in a shoebox. Um, and right now he gets it in like a spreadsheet that has a thousand spreadsheets to it. Um, and uh, so he is the organized one. And then I, I, when we hired um, uh, our admin, our transaction coordinator, uh, it, she has a very different skill set too. She's very organized, very um, behind the scenes, uh, very good on the phone. Um, and very, you know, just, just different skill set. Uh, and whereas, you know, I'm more the go in relationship builder. I'm the one that'll sit at the, the table and with a cup of coffee and talk to my clients, talk them off the ledge for three hours if need be, you know, when they're freaking out, um, where Justin would be out the door in 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and it, but we, we had to, um, both, uh, both Justin and our, uh, TC Rachel had to, um, like forced me to use Google Calendar um, because I was like, oh no, I'm just going to write everything down. And uh, they, I, I swear they teamed up on me and they um, literally like double booked my calendar for things to teach me to actually put things in my calendar. Um, and so that was, uh, that was something I had to overcome. Um, and I had no marketing experience, uh, advertising experience whatsoever coming from law enforcement. In fact, um, everything I did was like super private. I'm like, I don't want people to know my last name. I don't want people to know where I live. I don't want any of that. And so I had so much fear and anxiety about having a like Facebook profile that was public. Like I couldn't press the button. Justin had to press the button uh, to make it... Um, uh, 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 <laughs> And I'm a mom, so we have to juggle that too. We got we got a little one that just came in. Uh, we're parents, um, and so uh, the the Facebook profile. I was just so, so scared to turn it live. Like I was like, I don't want my information out there, and I I physically couldn't do it. Justin had to literally go on my computer and press the live button. Um, and then our our Facebook has so much action. I'm so glad that he did. That was that's been a great asset for us to, to have that. But but yeah, we've definitely have the challenges and uh, um, trying to figure out all those things along the way. I'm sure Justin can share some as, as well. I think as we've gone through growth from Jessica being a single agent to where the team is today and um, developing a, a commercial division along with the team, the challenges have been we don't stop to do the planning for the next phase of growth until we're drowning in work and activities. And so really being able to um, know like it's time to hire a transaction coordinator, it's time to add another agent to the team, it's time to do each of these steps and getting over the fear of the implementation and the growth is really, really tough to do. But if you're gonna be really mentally committed to growing your real estate business, you've gotta go through those steps and evolutions of investing in an admin assistant or transaction coordinator, investing in your website, um, getting over the fear of making videos and just digging in and, and doing the work 
um, in, investing in a major CRM and advertising and really being willing to take the next steps in growth, even though they're scary, when you know that the numbers will work out and pan out. And again, I think that's where we're a good team because um, the, the numbers don't lie and, and we don't prematurely grow um, faster than we, we have the capacity to. But when things, uh, when the projections and the, the historical work says, hey, it's time to hire more people or it's time to take on a new venture in business, we're not afraid to take that next step and move forward. That's a really good point. And I know, like I always say, it takes money to make money. I'm not saying if you're a brand new agent, like you don't need to go like max out every car credit card and buy a million lead gen because there's a lot of scams out there trying to take all of your money and all your friend requests on Facebook for a while will just be someone trying to sell you something. But it really does take money to make money. And I mean, there's so many free lead gen, but when you want to scale and grow, like you have to know to hire that person. And for transaction coordinators, I mean, I've never heard of any where you have to pay up front. They're always paid out of your commission, out of the end. When you're getting paid, they're getting paid. And I tell my mentees and like rookie agents, just get a transaction coordinator. I made the mistake of waiting until I was like drowning and just like super overwhelmed and stressed out. And that was just not the way to do it. But I didn't even know what a transaction coordinator was. But an agent buying one of my listings had my TC that I still use today. And I love her so much. And she is absolutely perfect. But I asked that agent, like, how do I like, who is this assistant you have? Like, I can't wait till I have one. And I just assumed this assistant was like at the desk in the office with her, but it's just like a virtual person that does all your paperwork. So I connected with that agent and we've become, well, with that transaction coordinator, we've become really close. Like she keeps my business running. I'm so grateful for her. And yes, it's expensive, but it's really, really not like to have your files organized and to have that time and energy is so worth it, especially if you plan to scale. So I think that's just such a smart move. You guys did it all. I think most of us wait until after we should have hired someone to hire them. But when you think about that hiring and growing to and investing in your business, um, knowing when to make those investments is a hard thing to do. But as a real estate agent, your best time is out there on dollar um, generating activities, not on all of the other things. And so, uh, you know, as we've grown our Jessica's business, our business, and as we have gone through um, the work of planning these succession plans too, we always tell agents to stay focused on the revenue generating activities and um, not all of the other noise and all of the other things that can be handled by really competent, skilled people that you build your team around. And, and, and kind of getting back to the succession plan, um, there are a lot of activities that you could spend time doing that are not ultimately going to be helping transition clients and close deals to generate um, more business for you, for the retiree, for your brokerage. And we try and keep people focused on those things uh, and moving those conversations forward without um, all of the other uh, components that, that people get distracted with in those things in a lot of cases. Yeah, your focus and organization is just so admirable. So what are your goals for the future? What? How many deals do you think you'll close this year? How many agents do you think you'll... Um, have for your succession planning? What does the future look like for you guys? That's a great question. And that's, that's something that this year in particular, as we work on uh, the commercial division and, and uh, solidifying how that's going to look and, and how we're going to run that. 
um, it's it, it definitely um, a challenge to figure out. You know, I, I see this year as more of a growing year, although um, uh, more of a growing as in um, like systems, more of a, a systems year. Uh, but then it, just with the transactions that we're already doing, I think it's going to be another big year. I know for for me personally, my focus right now is um, learning delegation better. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that's always, that's a challenge for me. Um, and then getting, um, I want to get, uh, our other two agents that work with us, um, getting them even more transactions and, and getting them to, to their goals, um, uh, of, uh, uh, 30 and 40, 50 transactions a piece, um, which is where they want to be and, and getting them to those, uh, and, and that ultimately gets us to our goals as well. So, and we probably, uh, need to add in maybe another assistant as well, um, or a, a VA of some sort. Uh, so we've been talking about that, but yeah, as, as we grow in scale, we're definitely looking at how we need to, to make sure the systems are still in, in check. And I think the, the systems that we've developed and, and COVID and the pandemic time has just shown us this, um, you, you can't sit back and rely on the systems that were two, three years ago, uh, or that experienced agents built their businesses on you've always got to be thinking about how to meet home buyers, home sellers, and, and commercial buyers, sellers, and leases, where they're at in the process and how they want to be met um, to meet their real estate needs. And that's going to look different post-pandemic. That's going to look different um, a few years from now. It, it looks different every quarter, every month as we get um, new data of, of points that we've never seen before in, in history. And uh, we've got to rise to the challenge and keep our eyes focused on serving customers. Wow, you guys are so amazing. I have had so much fun talking to you and learning all about your book and your systems and your business and your team. You guys are phenomenal. Tell our listeners where and how they can find you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. You do the uh, succession ones and I'll do our, our team one. <laughs> awesome. So if you would like to learn more about succession planning for real estate agents or monetizing your business in retirement, we hope you go and visit resuccession.com. That's R-E-S-U-C-E-S-S-I-O-N.com. You can email us at resuccession at gmail.com or find us on Amazon or Facebook real estate succession uh, will also get you there to connect with us. And if you have any referrals for buyers, sellers, or commercial in central Illinois in the Peoria area, we would love to talk to you. Yeah. For, uh, for our team, you can hit us up at uh, uh, jessicaballhomes.com. And then also for Instagram and Facebook, it's, it's uh, the same um, handles there, Jessica Ball Homes. Uh, and that's with an S on the end. Uh, and then we also, um, shameless plug here, uh, here in our area in particular, we have a great opportunity for investors because of our low price point of entry. And so um, a lot of local investors, a lot of out-of-state investors. So we have a website that is cashflowillinois.com. Uh, and that's a great place to, to start with analyzing this area for um, properties and the returns you can get as an investor. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much for being here. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for your time and thank you for all your tips. And thanks for being here. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks thank everyone. You. All right, real estate rock stars. That was Justin and Jessica Ball. Go buy their book, Plan for Your Future, and we'll see you next time. All right, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the rate rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, 
be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. Every penny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate, how to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. And if you want to chat with me, go find me on Instagram. And if you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our real estate rockstars page or at erinamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.